Good morning from my side. Hope you're all well. It's good to see all the faces again. And it's an honor for me to share the word this morning. Hope you are ready. Ask the person next to you, are you ready for the word? Amen, amen, amen. Two weeks ago, Donnie asked that we as a congregation go and read Acts 2 from verse 42 to 47 so that last Sunday we can discuss this passage and, um, and man, it was an awesome, awesome service. Who, who agrees with me? That was an ma- awesome service last Sunday. And um, the, the awesome thing was Dani shared and I shared, Munya shared, Babette shared, and then members of the congregation shared what they feel about Acts 2. And um, it was just this amazing, you know, unity in the church. It was just so, so amazing. And then, of course, the worship, like this morning, was just at a next level. People were in the passageway here. The kids were dancing in front here. Flags were waving. And um, that, that was just incredible. It was amazing. And Don had asked me to share the word. And then after last Sunday, I was just thinking, what can I share? And, and, and the thing came up about the importance of church. And um, so the title of my sermon this morning is, Why is Church Important? So, I want to ask you, why do you think church is important? And I'm going to ask two or three people, just two minutes, just two minutes. Why do you think church is important? Hey, there's young Paul there. Come, come, come. Wow, this is amazing. Not shy. Why do you think church is important, Paul? To praise God. To praise God. Mm-hmm. All together. Yeah. Amen. 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 Anyone else brave enough to just share why do you think church is important? Anyone? Yes, Justin. Come. Stand up and speak loudly. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Yes. Philippa? Now, members of the body. You play a vital role. Amen. Amen. Babette? Amen. So, Richard, yeah, yeah, more people. Come on, Richard, quickly. Amen. And then the last one, Donovan, speak loudly. Church is family. Amen. Everyone is 100% correct. You know, church is so, so important, and um, I think... Church globally, attendance is decreasing in the churches. And there's a reason for that, many reasons, I suppose. But I think, you know, especially after COVID-19, people had to stay home and people started listening to sermons online and that. And I think through modern technology, YouTube, live streaming, it is much easier to sit at home and listen to a sermon than actually come to church. And then, of course, I think, and this is just my personal view, I think the busyness of the world that we live in today, people are just hectic, busy, 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 and then come Sunday, they just want to relax at home. And But listen, I can understand if you're on holiday, if you're away, if you're on a business trip, I can understand that you cannot attend church. And there's other reasons, of course, but the encouragement I have, at least then listen to a sermon online. And especially now that Munya announced, and we've been having our sermons on YouTube for quite a while, so please just listen to our sermons. And I, and I think 
not because I'm preaching, but Dani and Munya and everyone that's preached here have had a really good word and, and a very encouraging word. And, and the one thing I can state this morning is that we are absolutely word-based. We preach the word of God as it is. And uh, so we don't divert from anything in the word of God. But the question is, why not sit at home? What's the difference? Well, I have three reasons. And there are probably many more reasons, but time-wise, I'm just going to deal with three reasons. And uh, we'll see in a moment. I'm just thinking of um, the guy is taking it easy in his room, and the wife came in and she says, come on, come on, get ready, we have to go to church. And she, he said to her, I'm not going to church. And she says, and why not? He says, I'm going to give you three reasons. He says, number one, I don't like the building. Number two, I don't like the people. And number three, the people don't like me. So she says, really? I'm going to give you three reasons why you must go. Number one, I'm ready to go to church. Number two, I've got the children all dressed up to go to church. And number three, you're the pastor. They're expecting you to preach today. <laughs> But I'm here because I want to. I love preaching. So, <laughs> But the first reason I believe, and we've mentioned it, a few of you here, it's God's presence. Now, I understand God is everywhere at the same time. And that is called his omnipresence. So wherever you are, God is there. And then you have the inner presence. That's, that's the Holy Spirit that is in you. So... Where you go, the Holy Spirit is with you. Where we are gathered, the Holy Spirit is with you. But then there's what I call the manifest presence that Richard mentioned, the manifest presence. And that especially is so good when we all come together, that manifest presence. There's just something when there's corporate worship and there's pressing in and there's seeking his face together where that manifest presence comes, which we did experience last Sunday in a mighty way, and I think today, I'll cook, you know, especially Jesu Makanaka, man, I just felt the, the Spirit of God just come. It was awesome. And as I said, last Sunday, the, the worship was so amazing, and there was dancing and flags, and, and um, we had a visitor here, Luke, his little girl, two years old, she was standing in front here with a little flag, and it was just incredible. But that happens when we gather as family. And you know, when you look at the Old Testament, you'll see that that was God's heart, that people gather together. And God instructs Moses to build a temple according to the pattern that is in heaven. And we can see that in uh, Exodus 25. Let's just go to Exodus 25. I think it's on the board there. Is it there, Joseph? Exodus 25, verse 8. And let them, who's them? The people. Let the people make me a sanctuary. Why? That I may dwell among them. Let the people, that's us, make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. See God's heart to dwell amongst us. And then if you just float down to verse 22. And I'm just going to read the first section. He says, and there I will meet with you and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat. Can you see God's heart? He wants us. He wants us together. He, he wants the sanctuary, the house of God, people to come together and he will be in our midst and he will speak to us. How does he speak? He's speaking through the word. He's speaking through me. He's speaking through prophetic word. And that's how God speaks to us. But there's something so powerful when we meet together in the house of God. Amen? And Jesus confirms this in the New Testament. He says in Matthew 18, 20, you all know that scripture very well. He says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I will be in their midst. Jesus himself says that. 
And it's not about numbers. It's about coming together as a family. But even if there are two or three, he's still in our midst. Amen? And that's the heart of Jesus, that we just get together as a family. And in the Old Testament, we've just mentioned about Moses. In Exodus 33, we all know that Moses said, if your presence does not go with us, I will not go up from you. Because Moses, even in the Old Testament, valued the presence of God. So the presence is so amazing. And church is the only organization. Church is different than any other organization in the world. Because God pitches up. Together. Amen. So the second thing is God's power. Now, we've just read Matthew 18, verse 20, but I just want you to back up to verse 19. Let's just go to Matthew 19. We're going to read those two verses together. So verse 19 says, Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. That's verse 19. And then it says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst. Can you see the connecting word there from verse 19 to 20? And it's that for. And you can say, because. So it says, Done for them by my Father in heaven, because where two or three are gathered in my name. You must connect these two verses. Normally we just co we always just quote verse 20. But when you read verse 19 going on to 20, it connects the two verses. And it's just there's so much power because it's his presence that's there. He's in our midst, but there's power when we all get together in the name of Jesus. And you know, you can at home, of course, experience his power in your secret place. You can. But once there's just something so powerful when we gather as a body in the, in the church. And you know, I was thinking when I was preparing, this makes it so important to be planted in the church. And this was Donnie's verse that he had for last year, to be planted in the church. And, and you know, let's just go there. I just want to read that Psalm 92. Psalm 92 verse 13. Are you all Okay. Psalm 92, verse 13. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bear fruit in the old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. Can you see the three things in this passage? They shall bear fruit, they shall be fresh, and they shall be flourishing. It's so, so important that you are planted in the house of God. And I praise God for everyone that is planted in Kabot Ministries. And it's so good to have a home where you can feel this is where I want to be. I was watching a Christian movie with Aniki the other day. I don't know if Aniki saw it, but there was this little butterfly. And you know this, have you seen the butterfly it just flutters and then it comes and sits and then it flies off and sits, and then it flies off and sits somewhere else. We cannot be butterfly Christians. You cannot be fluttering around. It is good to be planted in the house of God where you can contribute, where you bring your talents to the church, where you work together as a body. And that's what happened in the early church, what we discussed last week in Acts 2 is they were together, 3,000 people gave their lives to the Lord. And they formed the early church. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings. They devoted themselves to the church, the fellowship. It's incredible how they did it in the early church. And it's, there's a reason that portion of Scripture is in the Bible. It shows us the model of what we can follow. Amen? There's power when we get together. I read an, 
about a pastor ministering in a church, and um, he was doing marriage counseling. And he had been doing this counseling for many, many weeks and just didn't get anywhere with this couple. There was just no answer. And he said to them one day, he said, listen, I, I cannot anymore. I, I don't know what to do anymore. So they said, what do you mean? He says, well, you know, I, I cannot help you. But what I do suggest is just carry on coming to church. Come to the worship services. And we trust the Holy Spirit will do something in your life. And they did come. And I think it was the second Sunday they came. And the presence of God came. And the power of God came. And that pastor said the, this couple started the tears running down their cheeks. And soon after they were holding each other. And soon after you could see they were hugging each other. And in that moment, God instantly healed their marriage because of the presence and the power of God in that service. No further ministry. That couple, still married 50 years, still in the ministry, is now in the ministry, and a very successful businessman as well. Can you see in his presence and there's power when we get together? Amen. All okay? And then God's people. So you may be thinking right now, well, I have God's presence, I have his power, so why do I need people? Why do I need people? The answer is, his presence and his power flows through people. And we need each other. Someone there, there I just mentioned now, we need each other. We're family. We've all got our gifts. We've all got our talents. We all get together to encourage one another, to love one another, to care for one another. And you can flow in the giftings. And, and we need people. We, we need you. I, <laughs> I spoke to a certain gentleman. It was on Thursday. And I don't know how the subject of church came up. And he says, I'm not interested in church. I don't go to church. And I said, so what do you do? He says, no, it's just God and me. Just God and me. That's all. That's fine. I'm all right. And many people think that way. If, if I'm with God at home, I'm fine. And it's good to have a relationship with God. But you're so missing out on the family and where we get together and we form the body of Christ, that unity in the church. It's so, so important. You cannot be a loner. God created the house of God, the sanctuary, for the people to get together, and he will come and dwell amongst us, and he will speak to us, and he will minister to us. Amen? The Bible refers to us as people of God. And uh, if we go to 1 Peter 2, One Peter 2, and we're going to do from verse 9 to 10. And we know the scripture very well. It says, but you are a chosen generation. Each one of us sitting here is chosen. You're a chosen generation. And then it goes even further to say you're a royal priesthood. A holy nation. His own special people. Did you ever think about that? You are special in the eyes of Jesus and you belong to him. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who once were not a people but now the people of God. Who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. That last section Peter is quoting from Hosea 2. Verse 23, I think. He's quoting that where it says in Hosea that, and they will be my people and I will be their God. So we, individually, Jesus loves us. He cares for us. We are his people. We are his chosen generation. But his desire is that we get together where he can speak to us and dwell in our midst. Amen? Amen.
I loved it last week. My daughter-in-law, Babette. She's getting more bolder and bolder and braver by the day. I'm so impressed. But she had the, the whiteboard here. And through numbers and the alphabet and that, we all had to partake in what the number and what is the corresponding alphabetical word, um, letter. And eventually, when we all did that, it says, we need you. And so, we need you. <laughs> we all need each other. And that's what makes church so powerful when we get together because we care for each other, we love each other. And, um, you know, I, uh, I listened to a, a pastor the other day. He was talking about making these model airplanes. And my mind went back to when I was still at Godfrey Huggins Junior School here. And the in thing those years for Christmas time was to give someone a model airplane. And I had plenty of them. And in my room on my folks' farm on the veranda there, I had these model planes hanging from the ceiling that I had built together. And at first the model plane was very, not very, a small little thing, and then it grows, gets bigger and bigger, more complicated. But I used to build these model airplanes the, the Spitfire, the Tiger Moth, the World War II airplanes. And I remember you get this box with a little assembly instructions with some glue, and then you break off these parts and you start gluing them together and you assemble. But when all these little parts are lying there, you don't really see what this is. But when you've assembled them together, you say, wow, this is a nice little plane. This is a Spitfire, or it's a Tiger Moth, or whatever. Or it's a dub twin, or how do you say, double-winged, or what? So, that, that, that little box of all these different little parts get assembled together. And just like that, we are these little parts. And when we assemble together, it just forms this wonderful picture of the Church of God. Amen? Let's just go to Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2 from verse 19. Now therefore, are you not there yet? Ephesians 2 verse 19. I'm just going to read. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Did you get that? With the saints and members of the household of God. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. And listen to this. In whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Oh, that's so powerful. Can you see? Jesus is the cornerstone. And we are the living stones that he uses to build his church each with our own talents and giftings. And, and it says, yeah, it's built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. You know, we each have the Holy Spirit in us. But just think, Filippo and Sharia and Joseph and everyone here, we all have the Holy Spirit in us. But now just imagine all of us together with the Spirit of God in us with our different giftings, what power is there? Amazing. Amen? Just ask the person next to you, are you awake? Are you okay? Are you awake? Are you okay? <laughs> right, let's go to 1 Corinthians 14, verse 26.
1 Corinthians 14, 26. Listen to this. How is it then, brethren, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done for, educa for edification. So we get together, and each of us has different gifts, as I said. And sometimes we prophesy. Sharia got a word from a few people. Scripture we get. And so the Holy Spirit moves amongst us and builds each other up. Because that's why we get together, is to minister to each other, to love each other, to edify each other, which means building each other up. And apparently that's the way how we do, how we build the church, is building each other as living stones. Because it is someone else's teaching, it's someone else's word over you, it's a prophetic word that we get from someone. Someone prays for your healing and you are healed. All these gifts flow together in the church, but we need each other, we need to get together. I just want to read a letter that I got this morning and I want to read to you because this is a testimony, a very recent testimony of the power of church. And the letter was addressed to Dani and he says, Dear Dani, now this letter comes from Tamuka, Tamuka Zinyemba. We are writing to express our heartfelt gratitude to you, your leadership and congregants, for your generous and compassionate support during our daughter's illness. Words cannot describe how much your prayers, emotional and financial assistance meant to us in this difficult time. Alicia, their daughter, was diagnosed with a rare and aggressive tumor that was eating away at her skull. She had a big tumor at the back of her head. She needed an urgent and complex surgery to remove it and to save her life. The cost of the operation was beyond our means, and we were desperate for help. That's when you stepped in and showed us the true meaning of kindness and generosity. You donated money, you organized fundraisers, sent messages of encouragement, and prayed for us. You gave us hope and strength to face this challenge. You made the impossible possible. Thanks to you, our daughter's surgery was a success. She is now recovering well and looking forward to a bright future. She is a miracle, and you are the angels who made it happen. We will never forget what you've done for us. You are more than friends, you are family. We are internally grateful for your love and support. May God bless you and reward you for your goodness. Isn't that an amazing testimony? Let's give God all the praise. You see, God will give someone else what you need. And that's why we need each other. Last Sunday, we were worshiping. And as I said, it was an amazing time. And suddenly... God just dropped the word in my spirit, crossroads. And I think, what is crossroads? And I just asked the Lord just to confirm it. And he did confirm it three times. And that's during the worship. But after worship, I said to Dani, I just feel I have a word. And I just said, I feel there's someone here that's come to the crossroad of their life. They need to make a decision. Anyway, three people came up for prayer. And we managed to pray for them. And why am I saying this? It just shows how we miss out if we don't attend church because this is where the word flows. This is where prophetic word flows. This is where we can pray for healing. This is where we can encourage one another. Amen? You in agreement? I remember when we were still in that old building, Debbie, she came to church one day. And she had a major encounter with the Holy Spirit. I, I remember it so clearly. I even remember where she was sitting. And after the service, she said to me, that morning, 
when she woke up, she says, I'm not going to church. I don't feel like going to church. She says, but something just pushed me and I went to church and I'm so glad I came because I had this wonderful encounter with God. Isn't that amazing? Don't miss out on church. You only get that when we get together. Have any of you heard the, of, the signal of the signal trumpets? And I'm not going to read all the scriptures, but in the Old Testament in Numbers, Moses was instructed that they blow these trumpets. It's called the signal trumpet. And then whenever there's the signal trumpet, it, gather, it says it gathers the congregation. And those trumpets there, as I said, I'm not going through the scriptures now, it will take too long, but it was calling the congregation together. Why? Because there was edification, direction, and protection when the congregation gets together and they get direction. And that's also so important, why we must get together regularly. Because sometimes we might have like a series over three Sundays where we preach on a certain subject, but we can't do it in one Sunday. We do it over three Sundays. And that's why it's so important. Don't miss out. And if you cannot make it, go on to YouTube so that you are in step with what we preaching and what the Lord is telling us to do here. Amen? So why come to church? Don't be a loner. I love the bush. I love mountain pools. I used to hunt a lot. And you all know, and, and Pete and I have experienced it, the, the lion that is hungry and goes for the buffalo will attack on the buffalo that is on the side. The lonely buffalo, the one that could be a bit weak and not strong, the lion will go for that buffalo and will attack and kill it. And that's why I say, we cannot be living on the edge. We cannot say, oh, I don't want to attend church. I'm not interested in church. The problem is then you're alone. And the enemy is then at work. And that's when the worldly system tries to draw you in, draw you in, especially if you're alone. And that's one another reason it's so important. Don't be alone at home. The Bible calls us sheep. And the chief shepherd is Jesus. Get in the midst of the flock. Get in together because then you are safe against the attacks of the enemy. You need your brothers and sisters. We need each other. We need the love to flow between us. Amen? You need the body of Christ. I'm nearly done. I can have a pile of bricks here. Each brick could, has value, could be worth 50 cents, I don't know. And the brick, the cement brick from Lucon Bricks, they, they're strong. It's an attractive brick. But if it's just a pile of bricks, it doesn't look like much. But when you start using those bricks to build, and each brick starts fitting in, you see this beautiful wall go up. And that's the picture of us. We are the living stones, each one with its beautiful talents, how God created you, what God wants to use you for. But we're just a pile of people, but when we get together and God builds us together and we start flowing, we form this beautiful house, a uh, picture of the house of God and where he would love to dwell with us, where he loves to meet with us, where he loves to speak to us. Amen? And once again, the church is there to give direction, protection, edification, correction. And sometimes when we get into church here, we get the word and the Holy Spirit convicts you and he corrects you of maybe a wrong pattern in your life, a wrong thought or something like that but you get that in the word of God here. So you might say, Paul, do you have a scripture for all this? Because you've been referring to the Old Testament quite a bit. Where's the scripture in the New Testament about assembling together and getting together and building together? 
Well, in fact, I do have a scripture, Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, verse 24 to 25. And this is the writer of Hebrews saying, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves, as is in the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. Do not forsake the assembly of the saints. Not Paul speaking. It's the word of God. Do not forsake. But come and exhort one another. Build each other up. Edify each other. Help each other. Pray for each other. And then it says so much more as you see the day approaching. Church, ascend, church attendance shouldn't be decreasing, it should be increasing. Because folks, we are living in the end days, in the end times. And this is serious. When the disciples asked Jesus in Matthew 24, what are the signs of your return and the end of the age? Most people run after the wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes. But you know what Jesus first said in Matthew 24 verse 4? The first thing he says, watch out that you do not get deceived. Deception in the last days is going to be the greatest war uh, thing of the enemy that is going to attack people. It's deception. And if you're alone, it's so easy to get deceived because you're not getting the word of God into your heart. And the thing is, we build according to the word of God. And someone comes and just brings a little doubt in your life. And it's just a little bit off. Then you're actually off track. And you're living on the edge. And this is the greatest thing the enemy is going to use is deception in the last days. And that's why it's so important that we get together and work together and encourage one another. And that's the importance of church. Folks, I'm preaching this morning in the hope that I could stir your hearts to the importance of church and the assembling of the saints. But I'm not here to force anyone. It's still your own decision. <laughs> but I'm only giving you the benefits and the importance. And to end of God created the church. He created it for us to get together as the saints, as the living stones. And in this gathering, it's where we worship him. It's where we have fellowship. This is where we experience his presence and his power. And we as people of God, we get together, we grow together. We don't stay on the baby food anymore. We grow into maturity. Let us devote ourselves to the teachings of Kabot Ministries and the fellowship of Kabot Ministries. God bless you all and thank you for this morning. Amen, amen, amen.